time in terms of uh, facing censorship and all sorts of uh, abuse and intimidation especially. And this phenomenon actually I would never ever imagine as a working scientist, at least when I try to think in terms of what I want to do in science, that such a bad stuff could happen. And I give it to you, IPCC, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. These are the bad stuff coming from them. The first thing that is bad is that they're going to introduce you carbon neutral music. <laughs> Next, they're going to tell you it's going to be a carbon free sugar. No wonder Mr. Einstein said that something is wrong here. <laughs> IPCC is something about the fact-free science. In fact, the science you've got to put in court. Notice that Einstein is very, very careful on this topic. <laughs> so IPCC reports, what are they? They are just basically political agenda looking for scientists to do the right thing for them, which means put in the conclusion that they want. It doesn't matter what the facts are. Finish. So here's an example, 2013 report, the AR5 report. I hope everybody knows what IPCC do, right? They keep producing report after report after report, right? But three years before that, they already concluded that the change of the report will be much worse than the last one. <laughs> then you got the sixth report, which is coming next. Please don't worry, it's 2022. But it's not that far from now. But apparently... <coughs> Six or seven years before that, they already actually, this year, they're already talking about the planning, how we're going to tackle this, what sort of conclusion we could reach. So all of this is really, really far-fetched in that sense. Since that is, this is somewhat of a philosophical topic, I do indeed want to also share the enthusiasm of uh, my good friend, Jan Morton Hansen, that science ought to be protected in some sense. So we have to have this concept of disestablishment of science to so separate them from political influence and religious influence or what have you. It's, it's that kind of pure subject that is a very, very good stuff. If you guys know about this, somewhat of a good physicist, Jakob Bronowski. Read up some of his work. It's really good. Here's an example of fake science from IPCC. The lady here is actually going to be a big shot in the sixth assessment report. Her name is Valérie Masson de Mort from France. This is the kind of people who, instead of doing scientific work, tweeting every day, talking about nonsense, about how you use language, almost certainly mean this, whatever 90%, 99 highly likely, improbable, chances are slight, or I'm going home, nonsense like that. <laughs> it's really terrible. They are not even worried about that, about even the appearances of a, what you call conflict of interest. This Valerie Malson happened to publish a paper together with this crazy guy called Jim Hansen. If the camera is looking right here, yes, I say that Jim Hansen is crazy. <laughs> the reason why he's crazy is that they put out nonsense trash papers in scientific journals. Here is Earth System Dynamics, talking about how we owe the future and whatever, $535 trillion, guys. Don't bring your change to this topic. And then you have a crazy guy like Rajendra Pachari, former IPCC chair, who essentially, in fact, some of this phrase, I do appreciate him for being open about it. It tells you that this is not about science. It's a form of religion for this guy. Science for us is not a religion. It's just something that you study, something very, very powerful, something, something very useful. My good friend Nicholas Morner said that you free yourself from all thoughts of fear and all sorts of mental block, put it this way. And then you become more happy in some sense. We have uh, Karl Popper being mentioned. And indeed, Karl Popper has a lot of insight. If you claim this CO2, rising carbon dioxide, it's going to warm the globe. And when you see that the globe is not warming, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> Change the temperature. <laughs> so a theory which is not refutable by any conceivable event is non-scientific. Irrefu irrefutability is a, not a virtue of a theory, as people often think, but it is a vice. This is actually one of his famous papers that if you guys haven't read yet, it's worth reading. It's very, very good. Now I'm going to go into, because I've got only 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about four quick cases of the sort of bullies and all this censorship and intimidation that I have lived through. Okay? The first one is on the publication of a paper on a thousand years climate history. You all heard about 
Michael Mann's uh, temperature hockey streak history, right? Where Little Ice Age is not here anymore, Middle War One period is not anymore. I think all Vikings should go home, sorry Sweden. <laughs> and then this last minute cancellation, in science they play it so dirty that we can spend so many months proposing a scientific session, they approve it, everything, invite people and then they cancel because they don't like what we say. And then bullying by the thing called, you all heard about this thing called U.S. National Academy of Science, right? I'm sure Sweden, you have the same kind too. I don't think that they're very clean anymore. For the U.S. case, I can tell you. Is it 99.9% .9 corrupted? Uh-uh, it's 100.0. <laughs> That's what it is. I'll show you why, because it's just, it, it hurts my heart. Science can be destroyed by such ugly kind of nonsense from these people. They really think that they can do that. Most of us really love science, you know, in that sense. We will fight it to the end, put it this way. So let me start. It's about that paper that I published in Climate Research in 2003. It shows you that why the controversy is all about. So it's, a, it's a, basically a paper that described all the paleo evidence. At that time, we got about 300 paleo evidence across the world demonstrating medieval warm period exists, little ice age exists, the current warm period, it's just a tiny blip, it's relatively in comparison with, with little ice age, of course it's warmer, but with middle warm period, more or less the same, and not, you know, nothing unusual. So they are very angry with that kind of result. I don't believe that people that are scientific should be angry about certain result or conclusion. That is fairly natural in my opinion. So, but then you know, it's politics. They say, oh, because it was read by President Bush and those guys, nonsense like that. As if really I give a damn, actually. I, to be honest with you, I also don't care about that. So the story is that they actually did something very dirty to me. They actually took all my peer review process, which is actually a holy kind of document. I don't mind being shown, but the point is that they never asked for my permission. That kind of journal, they really are activist journal. They were pressured by those German or whoever it is, but they concluded, look, that the reviewer for all my papers all think that this is okay, editor analyzes is okay, the authors revise their manuscript. So what is the problem? Okay? I don't mind showing you guys anything, but the problem is that these people want to play a game like this. By the way, I have also been editor for a long time on journals, professional journal, and so, Things like this from uh, Professor Han von Stott, who claimed to be some very nice guy. He's standing up for science, you know? He'll stamp on the floor. That Willy Soon is so bad guy. He tried to publish two papers of the same type in different journals. So we bar him from the publishing. So he wanted to ban me from publication. This quote, by the way, is rarely appear. If you guys look in Climate Gate, you will find that quote, okay? Just to give you a hint. And you think this guy is a nice guy? He's not a nice guy. He was highly political. The reason why he got excited is mainly because he got a letter from this U.S. Senate Committee on Environment and Public Work. He got panicked. He's like a scientist who never been told, asked by politician that maybe I'm important now. Somebody want to ask me some opinion. You know, stay cool, dude. Don't worry about those fame and fortune, man. Just do science. You know, or come talk to me. He never talked to me. He just attacked me behind my scene. I'm very mad about people like that. So that's the paper, 2003, January, January 1st, the first month of January. It's proxy climatic environment changes of the past 1,000 years. Now let me give you a little twist, which I told it for the fourth time now. I also published this paper. So is it true that Willy Soon is actually trying to gain one more publication on his CV so he looks really good? Let me explain now. Actually. The previous paper in climate research is what you call a hoax, okay? <laughs> when it was reviewed that in climate research, you know what the reviewers say? The work is okay and all that stuff, but then this large section of it, almost 40 pages, don't print it, uh, don't, don't remove this or else you won't get printed. You think I'm going to take that kind of trend? You think I care about publication? And that 40 pages is actually related to something very direct, criticizing Man, Bradley, and Hughes' 99 paper. And you're not allowed to do that. I say, okay, if they want to play this game, take it. I'm going to cut all that out for fun. 
That's when I decided that it has to be a hoax. Then I sent the same longer version. So in print, the other one was 40, verse, 40 pages less. That's all it is. Nothing more to it, guys. Then you see how political things are, right? If you don't believe in this hockey stick, you are in trouble. Suck my stick, right? These people are so bad. But here's the internal politics. This actually, all this stuff come out in the Climate Gate email. <coughs> Sorry that you cannot read too much, but it involves something very high up. These guys are in charge of the Office of Science and Technology Policy, which is actually the advisor to the president's office. Where they were so mad that this guy working for NOAA, this guy published, by the way, work on Coral Reef, which I will never trust. This kind of people behind the scene saying that we got to come up with some strategy, some narrative to kill these guys. This is so flaw. Receive a measure. We do need a measure critical discussion of flaws. So because he want to supply to this guy who is now at JPL, but then he happens to work for the president's office advisor. And look who is on that emailing list. You may not know. Tom Wigley, bad guy. Phil Jones, I hope you guys know. Keith Briefa, Humes, Jim Hansen, Ben Santa, Kevin Tremberth, you know, Tom Cow, Ray Bradley, Mike McCracken. Most important thing to remember is Pachuri, by the way, is always there. Even the Pachuri, okay? Related to my paper. So imagine, will it be cited in IPCC? Ellen Mosley Thompson. The reason why she's highlighted because she's the editor in charge of this American Geophysical Union journal called EOS. They were actually colluding with each other. Because they want to attack me, they don't want to give me the last word, they didn't want to write the comment in the journal where I publish. So they go to American Geophysical Union, EOS journal, colluding inside. By the way, it is the climate email, proving beyond doubt that's what they did. Okay? And these are the nice people. Yes, they're very nice, but they don't like science too much, believe me. <laughs> they really don't like so much. And then they're even colluding with the press office. They're talking about me influencing the Harvard Library, uh, Harvard Press Office. We do get a press release out of that paper. I didn't want it. It's just that people from NASA saw it and then wanted to have press release. So I asked the press office, you want to do it? Do it. I'll tell you all the information. I don't really care. Science never worked by press releases. Give me a break. <laughs> and then not only that, secretly, secretly, look at what Tom Wigley, which is this bad guy, he actually was in charge of the University of East Anglia after Hubert Lamb, you know, the great climatologist. It was Tom Wigley taking over. That's, he's also somewhat prestigious in that sense. They say, well put, Mike, which is Michael Mann. By chance, Willie Soon and Balunas may have got some of these precipitation things right. But we don't want to give them any way to claim credit. Oh, nice guy, right? <laughs> Do I look like somebody who wants credit? for doing anything decent, at least just use your brain to study something. No need to thank me, right? If I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, period. But who is Tom Wigley? This is the guy who actually tried to change temperature too, okay? He's among the guy who proposed that, oh, temperature is warming like that, and then it cool 40 to 70. Maybe that cooling is too deep. We cannot explain, so we got to change this a little bit. It shows you that these guys are a bit nasty people, right? They are not quite of a scientist that you think it is, no? This is why the public should hear this talk. I hope the public really listen to this. I hope I don't have to rush too much, but please give me another few minutes. Then, even IPCC fifth assessment, the zero draft report, really agree with us that this droughts and flood regime are not unusual within the thousand years context. This, was, this quote was found by Stephen McIntyre, the guy who also, you know, my co-hockey stick breaker, put it this way. We are working independently on different angles. We show that this Michael Mann hockey stick is just nothing but a crazy stuff, you know? I'm sorry, it's so bad, you know? I might as well ask my kid to close their eye and then throw darts and then try to see if something land. It's just so bad. So indeed, it's crazy stuff, I mean, atmospheric jets. Now I want to talk about AGU censorship. American Geophysical Union. It is the largest geophysical group in the world. They have like, I don't know, 60,000 memberships and things like that. So I proposed a session with some of my prestigious colleagues, Professor David Lagates from University of Delaware, Professor Sutan Hamid from Stony Brook University. We proposed a session called The Diverse View from Galileo's Window, Researching Factors and Processes of Climate Change in the Age of Anthropogenic CO2. We mainly wanted to introduce, am I done? 
Yeah, it, it's I, I, I better, yeah, but almost there. Let me, let me, come on, I'm here a long way. I don't care, man, throw me out. <laughs> so this is how bad it is. We propose, we got approved, and then they say, ah, we don't want you, and you know, that sort of thing. After being approved, people even bought ticket. I bought my ticket, actually. Because we want to explain, Climax is very complex. You have to do astronomy, all this different stuff. All the good stuff, actually. You want to explain this. You want to really explain this. You know, this kind of beautiful structure. And then you got this crazy guy who actually rejected us. He said that our proposal had nothing to do with Galilean moon of Saturn. We just saw Galileo window, he doesn't even read the abstract. And he rejected us. It shows you how low quality these people are, right? And some big shot in uh, NASA, whatever nonsense. Show you the paper that published. High quality in my session. Unfortunately, it couldn't pass through. Let me very quickly to PNAS. This is really bad stuff. There was a bad paper published in PNAS. As a scientist, what do you do? Shout and cry and what is? No, you write a scientific critique as best as you can, as civil as you can, because you know who knows, maybe the guy was sleepy or on drugs, I don't know. <laughs> I just have to correct him. So we wrote this thing. It's just a letter. It's basically two, three afternoons. We work with a good guy by the name of Willie Sessionbach, who have no degree, no nothing, don't even have address. They keep asking me, are you sure you have no address? That you just say independent scientist? Yes, he got no inflation. And guess what the National Academy of Science wanted to do? Oh, they say that Willie Sun didn't declare his funding. We're going to put this correction in your letter. You're such a bad guy. Okay? It's essentially, this guy wanted to put a yellow star on my jacket. You all know what it means, yellow star, right? Yeah. These are Nazi signs, these people. Okay? Yeah. Let me say it. I really don't care. But you know, this guy, you have to play hard with them. I'm relatively a soft guy. I don't like to fight or confrontational and get angry. But these people make me angry like this. So I'm very lucky to have these three major lawyers wrote a very strong letter to them. They know that they will not stand. So they actually back off in that sense. But it's, that's terrible. Finally, let me go quickly. These people can give you some very strange math. 4 plus 4 is going to be 27. And 4 minus 4 is 7. Finally, very quickly. Guess what? City of New York is suing all this oil company. Maybe they should sue your start oil too. Who knows, man? Let's get a party going. They also attack me again. All of a sudden, I'm in every of these little things. These are another one of those crazy stuff from Greenpeace and New York Times. So I finish now. Two conclusions. The first thing, this dark cloud of censorship and intimidation is sweeping across climate science air arena in full display. There's nothing to hide. The climate science as we know it is very dangerously invaded and corrupted by scientism, which means the act of invoking science but never practice any science. These people are not scientists. The big bad bullies of censorship and those scientists, scientific institutions, funding agency continue to be calling shots and making decisions in just about any matter that's important to science. And that has to be stopped. And then finally, Nearly all institutions are essentially populated and controlled by activists and alarmists rather than curious scientists that are firmly convinced of the great harm of CO2 without any need for or no interest for scientific evidence. Sorry for being quick.